What's up, everybody? I'm Aslan. He is Gene Williams, the founder and administrator of Warchant.com, the ultimate seminal sports source. If you're not a member, use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access. Check it out. Pretty sure you will love it and you won't leave it. We're back, Gene. Thanks for joining us. We're doing our recruiting retrospective. And uh, I thought we were going to maybe go into a little bit more rosy, uh, more fertile recruiting grounds, maybe in the, uh, the early teens of uh, Florida State's uh, tenure here. Uh, but we're going in order still. We've done 2002, three, four, so why not 2005, Gene? Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, these are getting more fun, right? Yeah, th this one's a little bit more fun. You know, honestly, I started to look at 2010 to do what I said because we're getting a little depressed. And I took a glance at 2005. This is such an interesting class. I mean, you just had gigantic busts, and you had also a lot of guys that kind of exceeded expectations in it, too. And just uh, just some great stories. I said, you know what? We'll do one more. It's a little depressing, but let's do one more before we jump ahead. And I think it'll be worth it. Plus, we get to throw uh, we get to throw you under the bus a little bit on this one too. But we'll get to that later. We'll, we'll tease that one. All right. Well, let uh, let's not not tease it uh, and make people wait too long. But I guess you know uh, you know 2003. I think we obviously all agreed upon that that was just a a class that just did not have a lot of uh, kind of ammunition. There wasn't a lot of bullets in the chamber for the staff outside of Antonio Cromartie and Ernie Sims of uh, the third. Uh, 2004, we kind of saw that uptick in terms of, of blue chip guys, big name recruits, five stars. 2005, by and large, kind of continued on the momentum of that 2004 class, even though uh, the 2004 season wasn't all that successful. Yeah, it was a you know number two overall, according to Rivals. Again, you had three big time five stars and you had nine Rivals 100 members. So, I mean, you're right up there recruiting at a super high level again. You know, it's still, for the most part, Florida State going as had had the dominance over Florida, and you started to see really that's changed. Into, you remember that that game? One of the games that has got upset Florida State fans when they look back at the Florida series is losing the Ron Zook farewell campaign. He had already been fired, comes into Doe Campbell. Florida State was ranked, I think, number 10 at the time and ends up losing that to Ron Zook at home, really embarrassing. And that's, of course, started the Urban Meyer era. But, uh, you know, so but you still had a lot of chutzpah in that. You'd beaten Florida a lot. You still were decent. You weren't winning at the clip you were in the 90s. But you were still pretty decent competing for ACC championships at this point. So not bad going in. It was, on paper, a really good class that we can talk about. It, one other thing I want to throw before we start talking about the specific players, I found this. And if you read the story on Warchain about the 2005 class that accompanies, if you're just watching the video, go back and watch, read the story. I found an interesting article from Rivals back in 2012, and they rated the 10 biggest bus class classes of the 2000s. Florida State's 2004, 2005, and 2006 class were all in the top five. And that's all the teams. That's all the schools. They have three teams in a row finish in the top five, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, in terms of the bus factor, now I will submit, we'll talk about this class in a little bit. I don't think this class was as bad as the other two. There are some high-profile busts, but a lot of guys actually panned out, and a couple even exceeded expectations. I guess one of the guys, uh, would you say Everett Brown was maybe one of the guys that exceeded expectations, or uh, do you think uh, he, he kind of fit the bill? And he turns out he probably was maybe the, the most uh, productive guy and, and went on to have maybe the best NFL career out of the bunch. I mean, he was good. Yeah, I mean, he was a high four-star recruit uh, and had a good career. Really, was really one big season at Florida State. So, I mean, I'd say, yeah, he lived. he's the one who lived up to expectations, I would say. We can get it to in a little bit. Some couple guys that definitely exceeded expectations. You're a high four-star. You know, it, you have a solid career at Florida State. You make it to the NFL. That, that's almost expected. LaTroy Guillaume, is that one of the guys you would probably say uh, overshot his uh, recruiting ranking? He wasn't great. You know, that's a little bit you get to – I think when you go, there's some trends on the recruiting. Now, you look at the, this class because you go, um, you look at Geno Hayes, you mentioned Everett Brown, Derek Nicholson was solid, maybe not spectacular, but solid at Florida State. They're still doing okay, especially in some defensive areas. Where they were having a problem was offensive line and defensive line, and I, specifically on the interior of the defensive line. This, you know, you had, uh, you had Kendrick Stewart, who started a lot of games at Florida State, was massively undersized and got pushed around. LaTroy Guillaume was in and out of the lineup with injuries and problems. So, yeah, those were a couple of the guys that yeah, didn't quite fill that void that Florida State desperately needed on the interior. Like I said, offensive line, they had another guy in this class, Matt Hardrick, who was a big-time recruit. But, again, it seems like over and over and over they have these offensive linemen that either don't qualify or just flame out. 
seems like we're, we're reliving that history and most recently with the offensive line as well these days but yeah it was a big problem back then and you could obviously see, see the aftermath is what happened in going forward in 2005 six and seven how bad this program got but hey kendrick uh kendrick steer could do backflips gene in case, yes, you, in case you forgot <laughs> he can do backflips um so this class uh Still had some star power at the top of it. You know, there's three guys we should probably touch on. Uh, there's maybe good, bad, and indifferent when it comes to, to the three of them. Uh, let's start maybe at the, uh, the the rather negative pole of this uh, sort of <laughs> part of it. Uh, a guy like Callahan Bright, uh, arguably might have been the most complete, most physically ready uh, prospect in that entire 2005 class from a national perspective. Uh, to get a guy like that to commit, it was a position of need. I mean, you mentioned the, the, the lacking talent on the interior of the defensive line. Uh, many guys, we've talked about Deshaun Platt, guy that never showed up on campus. Callahan Bright is on that sort of Mount Rushmore of guys that never got on campus at Florida State, it seems like. And this guy was ridiculous. There's a handful of tapes I can remember back then. We used to get the VHS tapes that I can remember. Just my, my jaw hit the ground uh, when I looked at it. And this is one of them. This was a guy who was 315 pounds. He wasn't fat. He was just a big freaking dude, and he could run a. He ran a four eight at three hundred fifteen pounds. Nobody's running a four eight. He had a six hundred pound bench press. There's a there's a play on the clip I remember. As a wide receiver got open, ran. He ran him down fifty yards down the field. A three hundred five fifteen pound defensive tackle running a wide receiver down from behind. It was ridiculous. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Had he been able to qualify and do the, the right thing, he would have been a first-round pick. He would have been an All-American, whether Florida State or everywhere else. But, you know, grades are important. He, you knew going in it was he was a risk, and he never got his grades together, and he never played it down in college football. I know he was one of those, uh, you know, where are they now guys. I think uh, a website did a story on. He ended up, I think he was, due, he was a trash man for a little bit of time. He ended up going to Shaw yeah, University, yeah. I think, which was the NAIA school, and uh, he had dreams of maybe going to the Combine. Uh, nothing ever materialized, and uh, Callahan Bright, one of those what-ifs, uh, huge what-if for Florida State fans. Uh, I guess in the middle there, uh, a guy who did arrive, but then, you know, kind of went out with a with a bust or a bang. I don't know how you wanted to describe the exit, maybe in a, in a cloud of smoke, perhaps. Uh, Fred Rouse, uh, my guy, uh, Tallahassee product, big-time recruiting battle between uh, Texas and Florida State it came down to it, Fred Rouse. Uh, another guy that had great, vast potential, it seemed like, coming out of high school, but uh, never was able to tap into it, or at least Florida State wasn't able to get him to tap into it. Yeah, it's just this is another one of just enormous talent. I mean, you see Fred, I mean, he, it's six foot four. He had the long arms. He could run like the wind. And when he focused in, it didn't always happen, but, man, when he would focus in, he was unstoppable. I mean, he was ridiculous. And I, I got to – I know there's a bad stigma, and I got to – know Fred relatively well. I was pretty close with the Lincoln coaching staff at the time. You know, you never want to excuse an upbringing. He had a real tough upbringing, and he was never able to kind of get past that. But, man, he, you're right. He played. He was here one semester before he got kicked out of school. And, uh, you know, you, you hate to see it happen. And he was, again, never tried, bounced around a lot of, like, different smaller schools trying to get his act together. Never really did. Never really made it in college or the pros. And uh, it's a shame, but you, you see these kind of things happen all the time with kids who just are not focused, have a tough upbringing. Some of them get through it, and some of them prosper and go on to have great careers, and some can never seem to get by. And he was one of those guys that just couldn't do it. And it's a shame. And I know we had a time to go to you, Aslan. We had a young, wide-eyed intern who had the idea, let's do it. Let's do a fun feature on Fred. And that, that one semester he was at Florida State, I, I'll, I'll leave it to you to take it from there. Well, you know, I don't think I dubbed him Funky Fred. Uh, I think he mentioned a couple times about how he was going to bring the funk. Oh, bring the funk. Yeah. That was his quote. Yeah, and I think that was a – we interviewed him, I think, at some point. It might have been before the season or something. Yeah. He said, what do you, you know, what do you expect at, at FSU? What are you going to do? He says, I'm going to bring the funk. So it became Funky Fred. Yeah, so, you know, I was interning at the time with uh, – Gene gave me my, my first big break. I appreciate you. Also, I was working at the Osceola at the time. And, you know, it was like, hey, let's – um. You know, I'll, I'll do something called like, you know, five questions with Funky Fred or something along the lines of that. I think I'll probably I think uh, Gene was able to unearth the actual story that I wrote up. So uh, we'll, we'll put up here for your uh, your viewing pleasure. But basically at that time, you would be able to get any player you wanted walking off the practice field. And I'm basically walking and talking with Fred Rouse for about maybe like, you know, 85 yards as he's getting off the practice field and leaving. And I'm just firing off like these random questions um, I mean, you know, I, I remember one of the ones I asked him about was like, who would win in a, 
like I forgot who's the like who would could I forgot one of the wide receivers they had a former player that was on the coaching staff. I'm like, would he be able to get open uh, past James Colsey, who I think was a, a J at the time? But I asked him some just you know crazy off the wall questions or whatever, and he had some colorful responses. And you know I think we all thought I think maybe you and, and I were like, hey, you know what? This will be kind of like a little funny insight into a freshman that everyone's really curious about. Uh, it was absolutely universally lambasted. Uh, everybody was like, what in the world was this? Why are you talking to this kid? Uh, what a bunch of dumb questions. Who is this intern? So uh, <laughs> I wore it. I, I wore it like a badge of honor um, for a while. Uh, but, you know, you live and you learn. I didn't think it was all that bad, but uh, I, I, I won't ask any other person five funky questions, I promise. I, I went back. It wasn't as bad. We'll put up a link. But, yeah, it, it wasn't as bad as I, as I remember. At least I remember the aftermath. I remember the uh, just pummeling you took. Yeah on the war chant message boards back in uh, 2005 for that one. And that's, uh, that, that was a, that was an interesting memory for sure. Yeah. With Fred, it's uh, you know, he had a lot of problems in a short period of time at Florida state. He had the altercation on the sideline with a coach. I think it was more a verbal thing, got suspended. And then, uh, you know, a few months later, even after he got kicked off the team was buddied up with uh, AJ Nicholson to break in Lorenzo Booker's apartment. That was uh, a big deal in Tallahassee at the time. And, a little story I guess I can share now. It's been it's been long enough. And I remember having a conversation, I guess it was about a year later, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Kevin Steele at the time, who was one of the primary coaches that recruited Fred Rouse. And, the, you know, you knew all these red flags going in, and you knew it was a huge gamble and there was a decent chance he was going to flame out like he did. And just wondered, I said, was there any thought of just not recruiting him? And it was interesting that he said there was some discussion – about it but he goes at the end of the day the biggest problem was and you mentioned texas as on but the other problem was miami mm. miami was very involved in his recruitment and the fear was if they don't a kid in their backyard who's a five-star recruit who's the number one wide receiver in the nation at a pipeline school and you let him go to one of your biggest rivals and he ends up having a great career i mean coaches lose their jobs over that I mean, to let that kind of thing happen. No one's going to go back and go, well, he had all these red flags. We thought it was going to be a problem. If it, if it worked out down in Miami, you would never get credit for that. And you would you'd take a lot of slack for it. So I think politically, they, they pretty much had to take Fred Rouse at the time. All right. Well, we got a guy that never got on campus, a guy that got on campus and didn't <laughs> do a whole lot. Uh, and then we got a five star that, that showed up on campus uh, and actually had a pretty decent career. But maybe yep. what overshadowed his career was the last minute recruitment of him and more so uh, one of the most memorable threads in war chan history uh i don't i don't i don't want to misquote eugene what was it when it came to anton smith yeah that is uh and I, i'm disappointed we used to have the tomahawk where we keep old threads and i don't know in some some way rivals at some point got rid of that in the last couple of years but it was still there and stayed up for a long time and of course that was uh when anton smith you got to put it in the the proper context here so you know, Mr. Football in the state of Florida. You got to remember at the time in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, Miami was still rolling. They were still they were owning the state right then, well ahead of Florida State. And this is a guy from Bahokee. Everybody had him pegged for Miami. Florida State worked really hard recruiting him. They thought they had a shot, but at the end of the day, you go, well, you know, Miami's riding high. He's closer to there. Certainly, he's going to end up with Miami. So, got the call. I'm on with Gary Furman, who's now the publisher at for Kane Sport on rivals on the phone i guess he was from their gymnasium or wherever they were making his decision he just in that kind of monotone he obviously you tell oh my god he's going to florida state you know said that to me and i just i typed out at the time i guess my emotions got a little i said i i guess i don't know i think you can say crap can't you? yeah we can say it yeah. i guess but i said i said holy crap you know anton smith to florida state so that was that became quite the thread there for a while of a lot of excitement you know i had to ask him a couple times are you sure i don't want to put this out there unless you're sure he goes yeah he said he's going to florida state so yeah and he you know good really good kid man had a great relationship with anton smith who's just wonderful this time at florida state and you know i think because he was during that jeff bowden era he doesn't get a whole lot of credit but not a great offensive line but the guy rushed for over 2200 yards at his time at florida state 26 touchdowns when he finished his career, he was eighth all-time in career rushing yards at Florida State. So, I mean, he definitely, I think, lived up to the hype of being a, uh, you know, a five-star. And, you know, had a few pretty good years in the NFL as well. So, uh, you know, he came back, real good story, came back recently and got his degree. And, uh, you know, it's good to see him doing well. I mean, sneaky good career, I guess you really could say, in the yeah. NFL. I remember, you know, I think up to three years ago he was in the league. And 
I don't know, maybe 2014 or so. I, I remember just watching like NFL Red Zone and you're like, they're Anton Smith. And like he was ripping off runs for the Falcons. I'm like, is it this the same Anton Smith? So um, yeah, it was great to see him kind of uh, get a nice little second win there in the NFL. And, and to your point, to kind of further emphasize it, I mean, Miami had, had been dominating Florida State on the field. And, you know, 2004 was the rainbow offense, like, uh, and, no. and did not obviously work out according to plan. And he's Mr. Football, and he's down in Pahokee's, right in Miami's backyard. And it's, there's no way he's coming to Florida. Like, why would you even think that? And, um, yeah, when it happened, it was, uh, it was amazing. That was, uh, I mean, for sure, the number one best recruiting threat of all time on War Chant. So uh, it, was a, it was a great one. Good times. Yeah. Uh, I guess 2005 is also known, uh, you know, we went over three five-star recruits. It's also uh, known by the, the number of three, uh, a Texas trio, uh, the Lamarca trio. Uh, not really a, a natural kind of recruiting pipeline for Florida State, but somehow uh, there was planes going from Tallahassee to whatever airports close to Lamarck, Texas, it seemed like, Gene. That was something, man, at the time. I mean, Florida State fans were so excited at the time. You got the, all these top recruits out of Lamarck, Texas, and, man, boy, did they go 0 for 3 in those. And I'm talking, of course, about Russell Ball, Corey Mangum, and Clarence Ward. And uh, Clarence Ward transferred out, I think, after about a semester, really, never really did anything. Russell Ball was just a train wreck. I think he had something like three career carries in his entire time at Florida State, was injured, had all kind of issues off the field. And, uh, you know, Corey Mangum, Corey Mangum, oh, what, what can I say? Sweet, sweet Corey. Um, and that's that epitomizes how far Florida State had fallen. That you know, again, he took a lot of flack. It's not his fault he was a starter. He should have never been a starting defensive back at Florida State. But that shows you how far Florida State had fallen at the time that he was a multi-year starter at Florida State and just got burned game after game after game back there. And that was yeah that that did not work out very well the Lamarck trio that was a that was a major flame out and that's you know in addition to the two big five star flame outs that was some of the this lower tier not lower tier I mean a couple of those guys were four star recruits but yeah they definitely did not live up to expectations at FSU uh, I'm showing a stats right now off uh, ESPN.com is one season in Florida State 2000 and uh, since 2007 uh, you're on the nose there Gene three attempts two yards. Yeah, uh, but he did have two Russell. catches for uh, twenty yards, so that that's pretty oh. cool. All right, all right. Well, I, I short I sold him a little short there. So Russell Ball, yeah, that's uh, good for him. Now he's yeah, yeah I, to his defense a little bit. I don't know if you remember, he was actually a Rivals one hundred guy, and he blew out his yeah. knee for his senior yeah. season, and his tape was ridiculous. His junior season, he looked he looked special. I mean, he looked like a really good back, but never really got back, never really recovered fully from that knee injury. And I think one of those carries or one of those receptions he had, I think he, he blew his knee out again on it too. So it was just never meant to be for Russell Ball. Right. And then you touch upon it earlier, Gene, you know, in terms of guys that lived up to expectations and maybe those who exceeded it, in, in terms of kind of living up to their billing, you thought Geno Hayes, Derek Nicholson, yeah. Everett Brown, those were the kind of guys. Uh, what, what kind of guys do you think maybe kind of overshot, uh, you know, maybe what the expectations were for them when they signed with Florida State back in 2005? Well, that's why I think this class gets us sold a little short when Rivals listed as one of the five all-time worst in the t decade of the 2000s. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that because, again, you got to look at some of those upper middle tier guys did real well, the three you just mentioned, and a couple guys that completely exceeded expectations. And, you know, one of my favorite guys to cover at Florida State, and you were around for a little bit, was Rod Oldschool Owens. I mean, he was a small school, Wolfson High School. He was a three-star. Only had a couple. Didn't really have any huge offers. I think FSU, Clemson, Maryland were about it for his offers at the time. And uh, what a great personality. As you remember out in practice, he would tuck in his shirts. He had those high knee socks. He was a yes sir, no sir guy. So really kind of a throwback and really a lot of fun to cover. And we all remember that incredible game You know, he had against North Carolina when he had that 98-yard touchdown from Christian Ponder that kind of led the, the huge comeback that Florida State had against them in Chapel Hill and rallied to that 30-27 win. So he's done, he was a part of the track and field team, too. He was a really good player there. And then the other one, of course, the most successful member of this class by far, and that's Graham Gano. And uh, it's back-to-back -back years, because remember, Gary Sismesi was right before this, and he was the best part of that class, too. So now Graham Gano comes in. Got, he was the only one that was first-team All-American, first-team All-American, first-team All-ACC, won the Lou Groves Award. And I think every single one of us will always have in our minds that game against Wisconsin in the bowl game, his last game, when it was just like it was like Tiger Woods hitting an iron, you know, from, uh, from whatever, 120 out. He just kept sticking that thing over and over and over inside the three-yard line. It was ridiculous. He had a 
I think he had a 58-yard punt as well in that game. And if you go back in that 58-yard or backed him up so five, I think they Wisconsin really started on their seven-yard line. So they had four drives deep in their own territory, completely triple to the punter. And at the end of the day, he wins the MVP of that bowl game, which you never see a punter win an MVP. That shows you how great he was that game. And he's still thriving in the NFLs with the Carolina Panthers, just finished his 11th season. And uh, I think I read some story recently that he, like, rescued somebody. There was somebody who had a car accident or something. Did you see that, Aslan? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was somebody that's who was a hero, too. So, and a really good kid, man. I love covering Greg Gano at the time. It was just a, you love to see all these good things happen to him. Yeah. Trying to pull up his game log to, to fully embrace that, uh, whatever, the Russell Athletic Bowl, whatever that game was called. That, so, that I think it was the Citrus Bowl. Okay. It was the Citrus all Bowl. Right. Um, yeah, that was unreal. I, I remember just watching. Like, every, I'm like, just get him back on the field. Just let him punt. It's okay. Like, don't worry. Like, three and out is fine. Just keep keep pinning Wisconsin. It's uh, I, I've, the thing. I've seen a punter do that once. You know, like once in a game, they'll stick it mm-hmm. like that. He did it three times. I corner. mean, inside the three yard line. That's just nuts. Yeah. That's not. I've never seen a pro or a college game any punter ever do that to that extent. All right then, Gene. So with the 2005 recruiting class, uh, five stars that never made it, five stars that flamed out, five stars that did quite well, a couple guys that lived up to the expectations, a couple guys who overshot it. I mean, ultimately, uh, what do you make of the 2005 class and uh, what do you think they'll be remembered by? Well, obviously it was a hit and miss. I mean, it's going to be remembered. I think it was rated as a big bust because of the the Callahan Brights, the Fred Rouses. So it's going to be remembered for those guys. But I mean, there was a lot of about half the class was solid and contributed. So to me, it's not a complete fail. I think it was a, an average to below average class. But when we discussed the 2004 class, I mean, I think this greatly exceeded that because that had almost no nobody that exceeded expectations or lived up to expectations. So all in all, not a bad class. You know, obviously you had some players that have gone on to have some success in the league. You know, Geno Hayes was in the league for a while. Ever Brown, you mentioned Graham Gano, obviously, is – been incredibly consistent in the league now so i mean all in all not a bad class all right there we go but not a bad class leads to you know not a bad season but uh not a bad season at florida state is uh, wasn't good enough uh, unfortunately this kind of uh became uh, a bit of a trend in terms of the recruiting but uh you know brighter days were ahead just you know about yeah, you gotta wait a few more yeah. years but we're gonna get there and i will at this point i'm done i'm not i'm not gonna look at the 2006 class. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to cheat. Okay. We need something happy to talk about. This is a little bit more happy. We need something really exciting to talk about. The LaMarcus Joiners, those kind of guys. So we'll jump ahead to 2010 here the next time we do this, Aslan. All right. He's the boss. He calls the shots. That's what we'll do. He's Gene Williams, founder of WarChant.com. Thanks for watching this edition of the Recruiting Retrospective.